I'm starting this video off with a train. I'm actually in Samaprakhan, and that is the new SkyTrain line that has cut through Samaprakhan. But this morning, I am bringing you a local car meet, because I live not very far away, and there's a local car meet happening, so I drop down and see that, catch up with friends, catch up with cars. But this is actually a lot bigger than I was expecting. I wasn't expecting this many people to rock up this morning for this meet, and we're just coming up to 7.30 in the morning, and cars are queuing to get in, and this car park is already packed. And the first thing I'm going to say is, I was expecting when I come down, not a lot of cars, it's a small meet, not well advertised, not well promoted, just expect a few cars to rock up, have coffee, talk to people, go home. Wasn't really expecting to be honest to make a video and because I was out last night at the Racing Mania event at Klong Ha and I didn't get into like 12, 30, 1 o'clock, then I had to be up really early. I didn't particularly want to make a video and I was half sleepy and so we rocked up here and the first thing I did is I need to go and get coffee. I need to kickstart myself awake because we have a proper decent pucker meet going on and this is going to be a pretty cool meet so this is my video today i'm going to bring you a local meet in bangkok on a sunday morning this really loud red eg has got the bomb x kit on it you know from the fast and furious movies but in this case it's in red i like that i really like these big air intakes it's got a whole race feel to this kit but what i like is he's themed this out really really well He's got red wheels to match, scuttle panel is gone, he's got a couple of bucket style race seats in it. And if we go around the back as well, it's got a big rear spoiler and EGs, they work with those. So this concept is really nice, really clean, but a real race feel. But what's quite interesting here, he's got a complete carbon fibre dashboard, no instruments at all, a one piece carbon style dashboard, pure race feel. I'm not sure what he does for instruments, pretty nice and you can see the race door mirrors on it as well all the details very very simply done this spoon civic is really nicely done first of all the color is absolutely bang on and you can see it's got volve racing wheels the spoon calipers stuck in there and then it's got a carbon fiber bonnet and you can see the plaque on here the spoon plaque and the whole engine bay really nicely done a lot of spoon detailing in there in the piping in the battery and the whole bumper is nicely done we've got another spoon badge on here as well and you can see this carbon fiber lift very nicely done and then to set off all the blue it's done the cam cover in yellow this guy's got the best of both worlds. When you've got an engine bay as immaculate and as polished as that, and you go to a car meet, you want people to see it, so you take your bonnet off and you stick it behind the car. But when you put like a complete one-piece Perspex bonnet in place, you can go to the car meet, everyone can see your engine and the work you've done. You don't have to bother with spanners, getting someone to help you carry a bonnet, putting it behind. You just park up, you don't even have to undo the bonnet. You still got the bonnet pin shut. And while I'm here, this FD is very, very nice, and that gives me some ideas. Seems to be a morning of giant turbos. Here's another big, massive turbo on this Civic, and definitely this is the shortest exhaust exit we're gonna see this morning. These VW colour schemes where they paint all the panels in different colours, really popular. It's an iconic livery from the past century. But what I haven't seen before is this owner has actually done the badge out in three different colours as well. Four if we include the ring around it. I've not seen that before. That is quite a neat touch. And then right next door we have this thing. And I absolutely love this. It is just so outrageously crazy that you cannot but love this. I mean, you just look inside this car and you can look in it because there's no roof. He's got a one-piece steel seat in there. And look at the size of that gear shifter. That is absolutely cool. You cannot not love this car. And on the front, man, that is right down on the ground. And he's done the HKS cooler out here in different colors. 
And this grill is reminiscent of those Nissan grills as well. I'm not sure where he's homemade that. And you can see an intake here coming into a turbo sitting there. It's fantastic. The back end is really interesting. I kind of like starting off with this skateboard mounted on a bit of a plinth with a radio on it. Not sure what's going on there exactly, but you can see it's all been fabricated and cut away. And the owner tells me that he's actually used a rear subframe of an A31 Cephiro. Got a race style fuel tank sitting in the back and you can see all this fabrication for the air suspension. Really nicely done. There's an exhaust exit here. There's more frames in here. I think he puts a bicycle on the back, but the rear wheels, I absolutely love that. That is mental. The whole wheel has been painted out. Split rim or split rim effect. Big Bodicea here, nuts on it. That is crazy and that is right down in the arch on air. That looks really, really cool. And the owner, in fact, is standing right there. That it's the biggest turbo I have seen in my life on a Starlet. That is a completely mental. And the owner says he is kicking out 700 horsepower on this car. He's going to be going through transmissions like I get through coffee at this time of day. And some nice modifications on this as well. You can see the MSD coils. You can see all the custom radiator and brackets as well here and inlet. Pretty nice car, but that must be an absolute handful and a lot of fun. When it comes to massive turbos, it is obligatory on a Cephiro to have a huge turbo. It's completely obligatory in Thailand. There's a lot of very nice Mighty X builds in Thailand and this one has been done pretty well. And you can see it's down on air and I like these wheels. I like the fitment here, it looks really good. It's sitting there, really solid, nicely done. And what I like as well is, a lot of the Mighty X builds, they keep the chrome. And now you tend to chrome delete when you build things up. But the Mighty X guys, they keep the chrome and that kind of works really well. If you watch my videos, you know I have a soft spot for A31s. This one has been completely redone, really nice. But I also have a soft spot for wheels and tires that are just nowhere near the arch. And look at that, that is sitting out really nicely. These Volk racing wheels, really nice. Man, I like that. That kind of appeals to me. Got a lot of big turbos, a lot of modification going on, but this Jazz also caught my eye. You can see it's got a carbon fiber wing. It's got upgraded wheels, brakes, discs and bells. But underneath here, man, we've got a big turbo going on. Again, another one. We've got a machined cam cover. All the inlets here and all the coolers, everything. The radiator's all custom done. And then next door, we've got another one of these classic crawlers. Well, not really classic yet with some of the racing livery on it. I kind of like that and I like this, the way they put the Dunlop on the tires. And then I'm just gonna spin around because man, that is very, very beautiful. These Japanese classic touring car racing liveries absolutely bang on in my book. Keep seeing these cars and I keep stopping because they're done really nicely. Not too much modification, not too much on them, but really nice. And that rear spoiler, that is pure 90s touring car style with that twin central mount. This Brio, I had to stop and take two and think for a minute because this is a Brio with a Corolla style front end. GR Brio. It looks quite cool actually. I like that he's done a lot of work on this car, a lot of custom work. And that's again, that's what I like. You take a little car like a Brio, a small eco car. And you do all that custom work and you can see he's got an air intake on the bonnet. Around the back again, it's got a big spoiler on the roof. Custom rear lights and again, the whole back end with this diffuser, all custom done, and California plates on this morning as well. Carbon fiber handle there. This is really nicely done, and the wheels again stand out. I mean, maybe this has been recycled off something else, but I think most of the work is custom on this car. It's very interesting, that. What can you say about this jazz? He's got the real old school street racing vibe going on. I've never seen a bonnet like this. And look at the dive plate, it is huge. It's custom down here, custom a few years ago by the look of it. This is rough and ready, and this boy is going street racing. At night in style, we've got the air exits coming here. Let's have a look at the back end, see what's going on. Actually, the back end is fairly clean, fairly simple, but that is real old school Bangkok midnight street racing style. 
Always nice to see the Crick Garage S2000 at any event because this is beautifully done. You can see it's got spoon brakes on it and that spoon color there as well. Carbon fiber front on it. Composite bonnet is a very, very nice S2000. See it quite often, but you can never see enough of this car. Beautifully done. The thing I was gonna say when I saw this as a Fira modified, you don't see many modified Severas in Thailand, but there's actually two. But what is interesting, if you look at the badging on these cars, Subaru did a badged up version of the Safira for the Japanese market. And these guys have returned them to JDM specification because the Safira was sold in this market as an Opal. So there are quite a few of these around. Although what I said before, they don't normally modify them, but this has actually been completely done back to JDM specification. And Subaru called it a traffic and you can see the badge there. And what's really interesting is inside the car, he's completely done the interior into the Subaru specification. So you can see he's got the Subaru wheel here, the Subaru badging in there. And if I can get the camera down, you can see the traffic badge in the carpet. That's a real carpet. Actually, the door cards as well, a Subaru. And you can see the Subaru label on there as well. That is completely crazy. And there's also a lot of detailing. There's a lot of carbon fiber around the mirror here and around the edging of it and the weather strips here and the runners here are all done in carbon fiber. So he's put a lot of carbon fiber detailing on a rear wing as well with carbon fiber end plates. And you can see here on the back end, it's even got a Subaru rear bumper fitted. Man, I am absolutely blown away by this completely. And he's running on BBS as well. And you can see again, this one here with the traffic badging on it. And that badge has seen a lot of life. And again, he's got carbon fiber. This time he's got the shell done in carbon fiber, carbon fiber trims on the door handles. Kind of right, really impressive. I'm learning a bit today as well. And the finish is really nice. You can see all these vents, this paint scheme. It's got a racing towing eye on it. Carbon style lip spoiler. But it's this really that's kind of blown me away a little bit. I've never seen one of these before. And to see the detail and the work they've done. And that's what I really like. In this part of the world, people go back to the JDM specification. So they source the parts in Japan and then return the car from the local market specification into JDM specification. That's so cool. And I shouldn't forget, he's got a massive bear sitting on the roof. And here's another A31 where the wheels and the bodywork are even further out than the one I showed you a couple of minutes ago. It looks nice that it's on SSR. It's got Brembo rear calipers. That is the works. A 9.5 wagon is pretty rare here. And this guy looks like he's custom made all his bottom here, the diffuser section. It's got a big carbon fiber wing on the back. Have you ever seen that on a 9.5? And if we look down the car as well, he's got vents on the bonnet and he's got carbon fiber spotlight and a mesh here. All this looks custom made and you can see the carbon fiber around the grill which has got a mesh in it it's still kept the saw badge but that is pretty rare and that is very unusual to see a 9.5 so here is dave he has been doing an intensive month in thailand every car show every car meet i've been to in the last four weeks i bumped into this guy <laughs> this accord i see quite often but the fitment, the camber, the dish on that's really cool. Rear wheels are exactly the same. We've got a lot of stance on this rear wheel and it's right sitting down on air. Looks nice. I think Accords always work well on air. And then if we look under the engine bay, man, look at that exhaust thing going on there. That is confusing my eyes. And we've got an exit coming out here. This car, I've shown you in one of my videos recently, a Lassetti wagon. They're not valued here. People don't modify them. This is the first one I've seen that's modified, but the owner has really gone out and created something in his own style, in his own individuality. And I think since I saw it last, he's done these headlight covers as well. I don't know, there's something about this. I just kind of like it. You can see it's a wagon. And I like this color as well. And we've got some funny stickers here. Slow down, abuse daily. But that is just, it's different and it's kind of nice and it. it ticks the boxes. I always feel that these Zs are something that you can modify and you can always do something to make them look a bit different and add to the shape. And this one definitely does that. The size of these twin exits on the back are huge and this whole kind of diffuser thing 
feels a bit racing, feels a little bit of Lamborghini or something in there. And I kind of like that. That is quite a nice back end. This Camry is really nicely done. Drop right down on there. You can see the skirt here. You can see the rotiform wheels. And you can see the front. It's got extensions down here. Pretty nicely done. Not too much work done to it. It transforms it from what is not really much of a car when it's stock. Transforms it into something really nice to look at. So my regular last five minutes of the video, special guest Conan is back here this morning. Also, thanks for the ride here this morning as well, because I was pretty sleepy after Racing Mania last night. Anyway, I'm going to get him to pick out a few cars and a few interesting details that have gone straight over my head. So this car right here is the Toyota Starlet 1990 uh, EP82. This is JDM version, come with the TRD wheels and GT Advance stickers. This is uh, 1999 Honda Civic Coupe with the Desmond wheels and then the spoon calipers and also a custom K-series engine. So this is a rare breed here. A limited 2003 Subaru Bob I WRX STI. The selling point of this car is this one. The Wentz for the driver. So the, this is the mid-chip Rear engine Toyota MR2 with a big carbon fiber inlet for the air intake, big rear spoiler, race SE37 wheels with some more carbon fibers. This looks nice. So you see a lot of FD in the car show. This is another idea you can modify your FD to put a big turbo like this with a K20 engine. So this is the Honda CRV RD2 JDM version. It's got the special bling bling holes here with some bumper support from the JDM stuff. And this car comes with the Casco stuff right here, B20 engines and more accessories from the JDM stuff right here. And if you take a look at the inside, you will see uh, spinning seats. Only JDM models can do like that. And this is another way of determining this is a JDM. There is no spare tires in the back. Now you don't see this every day. This is the original WRC car. Garant with the AMG body kit and Lally Art wheels and racing livery Maburo. How cool is that? Look at this spoiler. The lines. So what you see here is a completely drag race monster. Got the front steel, a front lips right here, welded. A custom fabrication front support with a intercooler and radiator. And of course, Big turbo by HKS GT and custom manifold with the center exit exhaust. This car makes about 700 horsepower wheels. Just take a look at the inside, you won't believe it. How this car make it on the street and drive to the morning car meet right here. With one single seat and all the custom fuel tank inside the car, just crazy. So most of the time you see a Nissan Zephyro pop up in Thailand car meet. You see 1JC, 2JZ, but this is not ordinary one yet you see. This is coming off from a skyline, either R33, R34, it's RB26. Very expensive engine to put on a body like this. And this car also comes with the Grady turbo kit right here maybe give you around like 400 horsepower. These two small cars right here, the small SUV is called Nissan NV. They, they, they look appealing, uh, 90 styles with the big round uh, fog lights here. And also maybe of course uh, SR20 engine inside for the turbo version. It's just coming up to 9.30, the sun is coming up and I need to be out of here. So I hope we're showing you what a local meet is like for me in Thailand. This is a Bangkok 
local meet quite near my house get up at 5 30 leave my house about six get here about seven stay a couple of hours go away still got all the day this is the typical local meet in thailand you can see the cars you'd expect toyota honda mitsubishi those are the kind of cars you expect mostly like 90s jdm some not not stuff one or two older cars a good mix of stuff so i hope you've got an idea of what a local meet is like in Bangkok, they're all going to be pretty much the same. And to be honest, a lot of these cars you'll see as well at other meets. So that's it. This is an insight into a local meet in Thailand. Pop up a couple of hours. Time to go home.